sorry. I driving is not something I'm enjoying right now. Bucka, 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 bucka. How's it going, folks? Welcome to another episode of Can We Talk? I'm here with the uh, two-thirds usual suspects, <laughs> Shayna and Nicole. How's it going, Shayna? Good, good, good. You doing all right today? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. It's cold. How's it going, Nicole? I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not dead. I'm not dead yet. I'm just immobilized for the time being. And it's oh I'm getting I'm going crazy. I can't do anything. I'm just restless. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm 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 sorry you feel that way. I hope I hope you feel better. Um So what's on the agenda for today? I mean you uh you listening to any new hip hop releases, Shayna? No, um, I haven't really had, with the, it's a fu- future release, a collab album. I haven't listened to it yet, though. Yeah, that's not really my forte. But, um. What you get into this weekend? Me, myself? Um, you know, I found a rare Netflix find. I love it. I love those moments where you can find something on Netflix that, you know, that's kind of weird and that you don't think you'll like, but you like it. Um, I found something called, uh, Three hu- Three Wives, One Husband. Oh, is that a show? Yeah. Oh. It's four episodes, a uh, miniseries. You know, I, I like the show Big Love, which, um, you know, both of these are about polygamists. You know what I mean? But uh, this show, I didn't know if I would like it because I was like, eh, I wasn't really a big fan of the Sister Wives series. But this show's not bad, man. It's BBC America. They film an American family living out in this um, this, this rock like neighborhood like they they live near these rocks and they 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 build their own houses from the ground up and it's many um polygamous polygamous families living together and they're just they're just modern day families and um they filmed them over a year and i I liked it i it was was pretty entertaining okay i um i watched the first five episodes of the second season of making a murderer how's that um, it's like it's more bullshit. Like, <laughs> like it, like if the first season made you mad, like this one will completely engulf you in fun. It's it it's very frustrating to watch. Just I haven't. I tried to watch it, and I'm like on steroids right now. <laughs> like, they just make me angry, and like I fell asleep. So I'm gonna have to try again. But yeah, mm-hmm. just like the way they opened it and they were talking about like the lawyer and like all these people just the death threats and but at the same time it was really nice to see like all the letters that um mama avery was receiving after the documentary i gotta say i, I don't know about the stephen avery guy i'm more i more so have empathy for the uh, the, the younger nephew brandon yeah I, I got empathy for brandon because i think like just that interrogation scene in the first season makes me angry. Yeah. Yeah, the poor kid just wanted to play Lady and watch wrestling and he was in jail. Right, right. Yeah. Like I like I said, I, I don't know about Stephen Avery. I just don't I just don't know if he did it or didn't do it. Which, I don't think he did it. I really I honestly like You don't think yeah, he did I it. don't think he did it. You know, that brings me to another, you know, speaking of podcast, um, you know, I just got into serial. Okay. What are you on the first season or the because I'm on the second, so I finished the first. Okay, I see. I really I didn't have any sympathy for the main guy that they were talking about. I think he just left. Oh, well, dealing with the first season, like a non Saeed, yeah. like that's such a that's such a complex case because it's like because I'm 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 with the host. It's like I don't I don't know if he did it and I don't know if he didn't. Like because he's such a good guy, you figure like, well, was it was it a thing where he snapped? You know what I mean? Like, like I feel like the first season of Serial is great. If you don't know the story of the first season of Serial, um, Hey Ming Lee, I believe was the woman's name, 
Um, she disappeared and was found um, uh, buried or half buried in Lincoln Park in Baltimore. And the main suspect was her ex-boyfriend, Anand Saeed, who, um, um, per testimony from a friend of his or an acquaintance, Jay Wilde, said that, oh, uh, you know, Anand made me, um, uh, he told me he killed her and he made me uh, bury the body with her. So, and there, there's flaws in Jay Wilde's story. And so Serial kind of examines this. And, you know, you don't know if Anand really did it in the end. You don't know if he didn't do it. It's kind of left up to your interpretation. I know he just got granted a, a new trial. So that's coming, I think, like next month or another month where um, he gets a new um, a new attorney. But I just think that it's odd that had we not known about these cases through popular podcasts or mm-hmm. popular shows, they would just be left to just be. Definitely. And, you know, that that's a hey, that's the power of journalism, because, you know, one of the biggest documentaries that um, got somebody like um, com- um, acquitted was on um, the Thin Blue Line. Mm hmm. That has somebody acquitted, and then you got the HBO series Paradise Lost, where it dealt with the um, I forgot what they call them the West the West Memphis Five or something, or the West Memphis Three. Three, yeah, I know you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, the, the three kids who were like I guess they were like emos or weird, so they thought they got convicted because they because people thought they killed somebody, then they got acquitted, like they got sent home because it turns out they didn't kill them. You know, yeah, like I feel like with with the with the power of journalism, you could set somebody free. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was the only thing. I tried to get into Daredevil, but then um, I looked and I saw that making a murder or something, so I, I decided yeah. to watch that instead. Hey, man, moment of silence for Luke Cage. Mm. I mean, like, did you enjoy the I, second season? I didn't get Be to it yet. Honest. See, I the second season was like really bad. See, I heard some people say it's awesome. I don't give a flying fuck about Mariah Dillard. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Bushmaster was fine. Yeah. She she was the villain. Wait, wait, wait. I like Cottonmouth. Al- Alfie, I thought it? Cottonmouth was the perfect villain, and then he, like, died in, like... Yeah, that's where yeah, season get one to that episode, took though. a shit. Yeah, was, like... They killed they, well, I'm sorry, he's was... in season one. Well, so, uh, it, two people have spoiled it for me by this point. But, so. like, Cottonmouth, I thought he was an excellent villain, and then he... Diamondback he was... Stupid. Marshawn Ali is busy. <laughs> he's a he's a busy actor. He's gonna be in True Detective. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. But yeah, Luke Cage just was not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, canceled that. Canceled Iron Fist, which I heard a lot of people didn't cry about. <laughs> uh, um, season two was really season good. Two was was, was so it was much way better. better than the first season. That's what they all say. <laughs> it was no, nah, but but um. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I'm gonna miss him, man. I mean, I feel like him and Black Lightning, they were they were good as being the two leading black male superheroes. Is Black on Lightning TV. still on? Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, season two just started. So I got a theory. I heard a theory in the barbershop, a okay. barbershop theory that it ain't gonna be the last Netflix show to get canned because Disney's gonna start their own streaming service. And That's gonna, what I thought. And they're gonna upload all the Netflix series to their service and leave Netflix in the wind. I thought they said they weren't putting R-rated stuff on their streaming service though. So none that of the would Netflix stuff would qualify. Yeah, that would make sense. Luke Cage is R rated. It's T V M A. That's like a that's like a high PG thirteen though. Mm. There's so much violence There's a in gore. Lot of, yeah. Okay, so it's I, a, I guess it's so. TVMA. All right. Uh, I'll give you that. Uh, Nicole, you got anything to add? I watched the second season of Big Mouth. On oh Netflix. my god. That was I love that show. <laughs> I do, too. I feel really uncomfortable watching it with other people because it, it's <laughs> very it's very relatable, but it's very raunchy and touchy subjects that each person goes through in their life. My but, roommate oh, was watching that the it. other day. I was really <laughs> happy with it. And I walked in on the uh, the scene where the girls go to the spa with their mom or whatever, and it's oh, yeah, just the, the naked, naked ladies. women everywhere. <laughs> it's all cartoons. <laughs> They, they were like, yeah, that's not for kids. No. <laughs> well, of course it's not. I mean, it's in the title. But I like, um, there was a show that used to come on uh, FX called The League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I a like lot that of, show. Yeah, a lot of the people that were on The League do voices on Big Mouth. Yeah, I think uh, my, yeah. Man's, my man's co-created it. Nick um, Kroll. Nick Kroll, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, jo- John Mulaney does a voice on there, too. They're best friends. 
Um, I love the league, man. The league is so funny. The league is a really good show. Because I don't even like football fantasy, but I think like it's just so funny. I didn't know that it was mostly improv. They uh they they talked about a thing on that show called roster baiting, where <laughs> your roster is so good that you you low key masturbate to yourself, <laughs> looking at how good your roster is, and Nick crows in the bed, like like, <laughs> and they walk in on him and take a picture. <laughs> it's so funny. I love the league. Yeah, I miss that show. What oh Jordan had her first swim meet yesterday. Yay! And <laughs> she did four races. She got disqualified in three of them for like minor things, yeah. like um, you know certain strokes you have to touch the wall with two hands or touch the wall on your back. And then um, when she was doing a breaststroke, I think her f- foot came out of the water a couple times. But, I mean, she did, I thought she did pretty good other than those minor mistakes that, you know, got her disqualified. That was her first swim meet. But uh, toward the end, like, I'm sitting in the stands, like, I can't see her. Right, right, right. And there are a lot of, you know, the uh, swim parents that are on, you know, our team, you know, they're, like, looking over the ledge, you know, because there's still a race going on. And then I just hear somebody go, Jordan, no, no, Jordan, no. So... I go to the ledge and I look down and she's butt ass naked. There's still a race going on and there's like kids that are still like on deck and she's butt ass naked. I'm like, Jordan, stop. Like, stop. Like, what are you doing? And like the there's kids covering their eyes. And one of the older girls, she found a towel and threw it around her and walked her in the locker room. Oh, that's good, that's good. So I her coach talked to her and she was like he just told me not to do that ever, 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 ever again. Whoa. And I said, Jordan, what were you thinking? She was like, I was ready to go, and I didn't know where the locker room was. <laughs> oh, my God. Kids these days. And she, But I just, like, right. she wasn't embarrassed. Like, she was just like, I, I didn't know where the locker room was, so I just decided to get dressed. Yeah, the lesson, lesson learned, lesson learned. I mean, like, I... <laughs> I, I gotta say, <laughs> I mean, lesson learned because I got a similar story where, um, you know, my um, my little cousin, um, you know, he was in class and he kind of wet himself, and he didn't know <laughs> he didn't know where the bathroom was, so he wasn't ashamed about it. He was just like, well, I guess I just go, you know. But I mean, lesson learned. You know, sometimes kids don't know how to properly do something like that. Yeah, and it was her first one meet, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought she did a pretty good. You know, job. Other than you know the undressing in front of everyone, it was a learning experience for all of us. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, well, what we got next? I mean, I talked about where Netflix finds. You talked to me about a magic trick. I want to hear more about that. I don't know how you did it. So, like, um, so where were you? I was what at happened? a birthday party last night. Shout out to my friend Nicole. Um, we were at um, a party. And I'm not sure if you watch Battle Rap or are aware of a, of a all gentleman named Quest McCody. I don't know him. Yeah, Quest McCody. So he was doing card tricks. Mm. <laughs> and, like, you know, one, he was like, let me see your card. And then he made, like, three different decks. And then he will give you, like, a stack and, like, is your card in that deck? And then right. you look at the card and be like, no. And then you put the deck back down. And he's like, pick it up again. Are you sure? And then the card will be in the deck. We're like, how you doing that? So then it was another one where he shuffled the cards, and then you ball your fist up, and mm-hmm. he puts a small deck in your hand, mm-hmm. and then he, like, knock a card out of your hand, and mm-hmm. it would be the card. He's like, is that your card? And then he did another one, and then Marv, Marv one was like, you're the goddamn devil. Like, <laughs> how did you do that? <laughs> like, oh, he was like, how did, I, I'm like, how are you doing that? You having dinner with Marv one? Yeah, but like to that's my friend's boyfriend. So, so to us, he's just Marv, and it's just funny because people will come into the party because it's our friend's birthday party. That right. they'd be like, "Dog, did you see Marv one? Marv one is upstairs." Like, oh, like, and they'll talk to him, but like to me, he's just Marv. Yo, if Shayna ever gets famous as an activist, I'm be like, "Yo, that's just Shayna, man." <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just Shayna. That's just Shayna. <laughs> it's just Marv. That's cool, man. That's cool, though, that you um that you uh that you uh, experienced that. <laughs> 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 no, I've always wanted to experience like a magic guy on the street just showing magic tricks for like a few 
dollars or whatever. I never experienced that in my life. I feel like that's one of the best, sweetest little moments of life ever. Have you been to the movies? Yeah, I've been to the movies. What did you see? Everybody's been to the movies. I oh, have not been to the oh, movies. Oh, lately, no. I still got to see Halloween. I have not seen Halloween either. Come on, man. Jamie Lee Curtis with a shotgun. Who, who's not going to want to go see this movie? <laughs> She's grandma with a shotgun, man. She's ready to, you know, bring hell. I did hear that they acted like that, they, yeah. that all the other Halloween movies didn't exist. I think that's best, though. I mean, because they wanted to bring her back, and they wanted to... Um, she re- died? Revis- yeah, she died in Halloween Resurrection, the opening scene. Oh, see. The one with Buster Rhymes, the forgettable one. See, <laughs> you, don't, you don't even remember it, see? When did that come out? Oh, yeah. Was that like age 20 or something? No, that's what LL Cool J. Um, I think that's the last oh. one I saw was age 20, age 2 yeah. So at the end of that one, she chopped uh, Michael Myers' head off, but then, it, but then in the beginning of Resurrection, it turns out it was another guy. It wasn't Mike Myers. So, um, yeah, so Buster Rhymes and Tyler Banks are, are producing this reality show where people are stuck in this house where they're going to scare everybody. And then Michael Myers shows up there and it turns into a real, you know, reality show killing competition. Oh, wow. I don't remember that movie at all. It's forgettable. <laughs> the, only, the only thing I remember is when Buster <laughs> Rhymes, he kicks down the door and says, you know, happy Halloween, motherfucker. And then him and Mike Myers fight. I think he killed him. I think Mike Myers killed Buster. But, um, yeah, it was funny. I mean, I love those cheesy B movies, though. I feel like, I feel like when you look at the film Scream, that's a very underrated movie because that's a great satire of horror films. I would enjoy Scream. Yeah, like and two, I like Scream. I like the, the sequel. I liked all four, to be honest, because I feel like Wes Craven. He 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 really like made fun of his own films, made fun of horror films, and he did it well. Okay, now that we're on the topic of horror films, I was talking to one of the swim moms. Mm-hmm. And she was saying that she has uh, twin boys, they're seven, and because of the cartoons that they watch, they think death is funny. They watch Family Guy? I'm not sure, but she was saying, like, you know, she told them, like, oh, my uncle passed away, and he, they laughed. Yeah, I mean. So, so she was like, I want them to start watching slasher films so they could know that this is not funny. <laughs> That's going to make it worse, though. <laughs> Because like even in slasher films, some some death scenes are funny. Are they? The Anthony Anderson death scene in Screen Four is funny. <laughs> like, but I it was another mom there. She was like, I really don't think that's a good idea. It's it's not. She was it's like, not. Yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy a Chucky doll, and then I'm gonna have them watch Chucky. <laughs> but Chucky's funny. Is like, it? Yeah, the I mean, later ones, like Bride of Chucky, that's like a comedy. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Chucky's always been witty. Like, you know, like, dude, the the scene in Child's Play where she's about to throw him in the fire, he's like, you fucking bitch, don't do this to me. <laughs> and then, you know, like, that's funny. I bet you everybody in the theater in the 80s laughed at that scene. I have been enjoying um, lately watching, like, the the kid-friendly Halloween movie. Like, we, me and my daughter, we watch. Hocus watched, Pocus. Yes, we watch Hocus Pocus. We watch Ghostbusters 1 and 2. She likes 2 more than she likes 1. It's been a while since I watched Ghostbusters. I've yeah. never seen Hocus Pocus. What? what? I, <laughs> I, never, I never thought that was a movie for me. It's like, amazing. I, that's what I keep hearing, but I don't know, man. Is that like You that? are hurting my heart. I Bette used Miller? to watch that all Come the on. time, like when it wasn't Halloween. So like, like Bette Miller and uh, who else in there? Cher? Is Sharon there? No, it's Bette Midler. No, okay. Sarah Jessica Sarah Parker. Sarah Jessica Parker. And Kathy and Jimmy. Yep. Okay, sell it to me. Sell me Hocus Pocus. It's good. It's the best Halloween movie yeah, I, ever that, created. That's not really enough. You like, gotta... I really don't understand, like, how, like what, what makes it not for you? <laughs> well, I mean, like, I felt like, one, it was, like, a chick movie. I mean, like, I don't know if this is for me. This is it was, it was like a no, chick movie. No, it's not a chick movie. My brother watches it. I'm not your brother. It's <laughs> it's really funny. Like these witches, uh, it's, it happens in Salem. So okay. these witches get killed during the witch trials, and they come back in the '90s. So it's like funny to see them like adjust. Like what is this? Right, right, what right, is, right, right. Like it's it's really yeah. You know the thing is, I it's enjoy. got a lot of like good one liners. Yeah, I, I I no, I can see how it could be funny. I, I'll check it out sometime. Um, is that one of those movies that did bad the box office but became a cult hit? I don't think so. Cause I don't know if that that movie did well or not. I didn't live back then, so I don't. 
I don't know. <laughs> oh, you. This is before you were born. I don't know. Was it? It came out in the nineties. Yes. Nineteen ninety-three. Okay, so I had just been born. Oh, yeah. You know, I um. It had a budget of twenty-eight million and made thirty-nine point five million, so it wasn't a okay. smashing success. It wasn't. Wow! As many times I watched it. <laughs> I can understand that though. Like you know, I've been listen. I've been tricked before. You know, like I remember the Devil Wears Prada came out, and I'm like, I ain't watching this bullshit. That's an but, awesome movie. But I remember my mom rented it, and she's like, she's like, just watch this with me. And like you know, I'm like, cause we ain't, we haven't seen a movie together in a while. So I came downstairs, and I enjoyed it, man. I'm like, man, Ma- Meryl Streep is a beast in that movie. I I'm like, Meryl Streep is killing it in this movie. I want this girl to succeed. I want her to win and be the top designer or whatever, even though I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> you know, like, the film won me over. And um, and one movie, I actively, like, we had a whole crew of guys. We went to go see The Hangover 2. And uh, we had time. Sorry about that. We liked that movie. We were, cra- <laughs> we were cracking up. We loved The Hangover 2. And so we had time to see another movie. So I said, y'all, listen to me. Listen to me. There's this movie out called Bridesmaids. It looks funny. I think we should all go see it. Everybody looked at me like I was crazy. Like, we ain't going to see a movie about bridesmaids. I said, man, let's go see this movie. It's going to be hilarious. We went in there. We were dying laughing. Like, I <laughs> yeah, knew, Bridesmaids was funny. I knew Bridesmaids was going to be funny. I don't know what about it. I think it was the name Judd Apatow attached to it. I just knew it was going to be funny. And we didn't fail. Yeah, we look kind of weird, a bunch of guys, but we didn't fail. <laughs> I just checked, and Hocus Pocus only has 30% on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, no really? one looked at I mean... Movies I love have 30% on Rotten Tomatoes. I love Hocus Pocus. Like, I still love it. When I watched it the other day, I was like, oh, my God, I really love this movie still. If I'm going to watch a chick flick, it has to be the right one, though. Like, some, I've, I've been I've been tricked before. Tricked how? I've been goofed. Like, I've been, I've been I've watched something, and I was tricked into enjoying it, but when I look back on it, I was like, nah, that was trash. <laughs> like, the proposal with Sandra Bullock. I liked it when I was watching it, but then I looked back on it and said, eh, that was kind of trash. The Proposal, is that with uh, Ryan, Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds? Oh. I liked it when I was watching it, but then I looked back and say, eh, I don't know. But I did, um, a film I do stand by, though, is um, Just Friends with Ryan Reynolds and Amy Smart. That's a funny. I love that movie. That's a funny, goofy movie right there. I love that movie. Oh, my God. When my got, favorite line, I'm busy, stupid dick. <laughs> when you got when you got um fat Ryan, Ryan Reynolds in this mirror, mirror singing, and I swear <laughs> by the moon. You know that song. Yeah, off of one. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's funny. Uh, I have never seen that. I've never seen Just Friends. That's I've a, seen The Proposal. Yeah. It's a solid movie, The Proposal. Just Friends is pretty funny, but it's goofy, you know. Um, you ever seen Bringing Down the House with Steve Martin and Queen Latifah? Yes. That's a classic. Is it? I did not like it at all. I like that movie because I feel like. But, see, like, I, when I was younger, I had, like, I had seen a movie like that already called House Guest with Sinbad. Yeah, yeah, but I feel like they're both... And I think Phil Hartman. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I feel like they're both funny in their own right. Like, I feel like Queen Latifah, you know, she brings the laughs. She matches up with Steve Martin, just like Sinbad matched up with Phil. I didn't like Bring It Down the House. I did enjoy I might need. I need to go back and watch House Guests. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. I miss Sinbad. Isn't he on Lil' Rail Show? He is on Rail Show. I just, I think, watched the first three episodes, allegedly, while I was at work. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I I am enjoying Jess Hilarious uh character on the show. And I and I didn't like her that brand of comedy that on the like her I didn't like her Instagram comedy. Right, right, right. And then when I saw her on uh Def or was it Def Comedy Jam? It might have been like that doesn't the new, exist anymore, does it? It was something like a Def like comedy thing that was on HBO. <laughs> I didn't think her stand up did was really good, but I think comedic acting may be her thing. You know, these days it's hard for me to watch a full a full length stand up special. It's like I gotta know about you before I invest in you that much. Well, you know how Deaf Comedy Jam is. Well, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know different comedians they get like five minutes. Like I didn't get into Bill Burr until somebody told me like, "Oh, you like Louis C.K.? Check out <laughs> Bill Burr." 
Mm-hmm. Then I saw Bill Burr. I said, okay, this, this, this guy is a nice, you know, nice complimentary act. I like Bill Burr. Yeah, I like him. Um, I When I used to watch, listen to uh, Opie and Anthony, and he would be on there cussing Anthony out. That's Opie and Anthony, wild, man. That they were. So, yeah. <laughs> they were? Yes, they were. But I mostly listened to it because of Patrice O'Neill. Yeah, yeah, he passed away. Rest in peace. All right, Nicole. Well, wait, what are your favorite comedians right now? Who do you li- who do you listen to watch? Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan's funny. I like him. Um, kind of an asshole, but he's funny, and that's part of his shtick, I guess. Yeah, he's just he's very unapologetic, which is that's fine. I don't know. I like how he talks about getting high all the time. He has a new uh, special on Netflix, doesn't he? Strange Times. Uh, I just watched that the other day. It was pretty good. One of his best or just, like, average? Yeah, it was average. I was entertained. Hey, is Aziz Asnari funny? I never watched his stand-up. Is, I, I, is, I tried to Aziz watch one. Ansari? Aziz Ansari. I tried to watch one I... of his stand-ups. <laughs> I mean, I tried, though. Like, I like him when he's a character on a show. Like, I got to be honest. Um, I do want to watch um his new special because it's after the whole that I think it was filmed after the allegations. So I do want to watch it to see what he has to say. Is it on Netflix? Yes. Oh, what's it called? I don't know. I just know it came <laughs> up and I was like, let me see let me uh see if I can uh I don't add rem- it to my list. I think it is. I don't remember seeing news about that. Hmm. What do you think? Is Aziz funny, Nicole? I don't. I mean, I liked him in the past. I liked when he would talk about Kanye West. Right, 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 right. But, like, I feel like all of his jokes are just, like, he's just, he doesn't change things up. He's a quirky dude. I don't really like yeah. quirky comedians. Like, I really tried to get into Hannibal Buress. Like, I don't Hannibal really... Buress is not funny. Burress. Like, I don't think, it, huh? Uh, no, I said Burris. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. He's not funny. Like, I don't think he's a good comedic actor. I don't think he's a good stand-up. I don't think he's funny at all. No, nah, I, I gotta, I gotta disagree with you. I think he's a great co-host on Eric Andre's show. I, I think, don't watch it. I think him and Eric Andre are a great team. But I mean, listen to the stand-up though. It's like, eh, he's kind of a little too quirky for me. I mean, I want him to win, but he's a little too quirky for my taste. Yeah, I'm not a fan like at all. Hey. So you were telling us about um what what was it? Uh Ballet Horrible? No, no, it was um <laughs> <laughs> Theater Bazaar. Theater Bazaar. Okay. All right, so Theater Bazaar. Tell us about this, Randy. Uh this is my first time I've ever been and I was working it, so I didn't get to see a lot of it. Um but it's a two weekend long Halloween party basically. Uh it's at the Masonic Temple, Masonic Theater now. Um but uh I showed up at 10 o'clock when makeup opened, and I was there until 3 a.m., mm. so I was there for, what is that, 15 hours? So what do they have you doing? Do you just stand so still and just... My, my specific role was uh, I was a red robe member of the Infernal Guard, so basically I was to uh, sit in the observatory, which is the silent performance room, where they had, um, uh, they had uh, rope bondage display they had uh contortionists and and interpretive dancers and things like that performing on stage and it was the same performances every hour so you just sit uh and go through um the performances so people could come in and out at their leisure and just see which performances they wanted to but i sat at the head of the stage and basically just watched people that was that was my whole job was to just sit up there look kind of intimidating i had uh, my face painted white with gray eyes to look kind of undead and would you do it again? Was it a great experience? Yeah, it was good. Um, after probably the second time, the, the performances started to get a little repetitive and boring, and I can't really fidget or move around or anything, so I don't know if I would do the same job again. But <laughs> No, no, that sounds great, though. That sounds great. Um, yeah, um, Friday nights. It's, it's Friday and Saturday night, two weekends in a row. Friday night is the uh, gala event, so it's a formal masquerade ball Okay. with, like, 500 people tops, um, but it didn't. The tickets all inclusive includes valet parking, includes cocktail, uh, open bar, past, past food, 
Uh, and then Saturday is more of the casual Halloween party. It's like $100 tickets, and um, there's like 5,000 people on the Saturday events. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. That sounds awesome. So you told us something that um, I had heard as a rumor, but now you're confirming that it's true, is that um, there are little, like, um, after dark sessions there, or <laughs> like... I like mean, the whole thing is after dark. The whole <laughs> the whole event is 21 right. plus, but the, uh, one of the rooms uh, is called the Fistatorium. And the only thing I know about it, because I, I didn't get a chance to check in once the show was up, or once the party actually started, but I took a picture of the sign outside the room uh, that says, no cameras, no phones out, no touching without consent, no spilling of bodily fluids, participation required, this is not a voyeur space, enter at your own risk, bruising can happen, use your safe word. So, <laughs> do, 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 uh, so... Is it by random that you might have to be the person that gets um, gets got, or you can be the gotter? I don't know. You are I assume the... I can't roll the dice like that. <laughs> I, I, just, assume I just can't roll the <laughs> dice like that. I assume the, the volunteers and staff of Theater Bazaar are the ones who are performing, and you just go and... Um, I met a woman in the elevator who was working the event, and she said she was um, ended up uh, caning a woman. Like, she started out with, like, a, a riding crop or something like that and moved all the way up to, like, this quarter-inch thick rod that she was hitting this woman with. Wow. Hey, I mean, hey, uh, you know, when in Rome or when in Theater Bazaar. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's bizarre and a little... Nicole, what you guys say about this? <laughs> it sounds interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> But other than that, there's, you know, musical performances, DJs, jugglers, acrobats. Oh, of course, yeah. You know, uh, it's not just, you know, yeah. uh, the, the Dark Fistatorium and, you know, right. there's other things, you know. There's other, other performances and stuff like that. That sounds fun. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll wait outside while you go in. <laughs> no, no. Hey, so, listen, quick question. Masonic Theater. So, was that like a – did that used to be a temple for, like, Masons or – It still is. Mm-hmm. And it's the largest in the world, do they have like do we hold like church there or like meetings or yeah they have meetings and offices and things there, mm-hmm. plus they have the theater there for concerts and things like that yeah and graduations and I've always been interested in Masons because it feels like like I know they get I know they get the bad rap with the whole like you know like Illuminati theory or whatever but I feel like like so what are they is it just like a secret organization or um yes. <laughs> uh, I have some family members who were Masons. I don't know details, but I know that one of the tenets is to become a Mason. You have to ask a Mason. Like, they don't recruit. You have to ask to join. Oh. Yeah. Didn't know that. Sounds interesting. Didn't know that. So, where are you um, in your psyche, Santa, with uh, Kanye? Um... <laughs> Are you fully done with this man, or? I um I like. What do you mean, like done? Like if a new if Yandi drops tomorrow, are you going to listen to it at some point? No, probably not. Depends on. Did you listen to Pusha T's interview uh, on no, Joe I... Budden's podcast? That was very long but interesting interview. Uh, all I got from it is that he said that Forty was the one that, well, inadvertently Forty told a woman he was sleeping with who told Pusha about Drake's kid, and that's, that's all. That's all I, you got out of that one? Why? Well, I, I mean, I didn't listen to it. Oh, I, 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 okay. got, I got like information. Well, my I was thing told on is, it. um, he had a lot of good things to say about people in the industry, but that's what got reported. Like, he had a, oh, yeah, I'm a fan of this person. Oh, yeah, this is my friend. Oh, yeah, like, I love. Like, he said that he had some good things to say about Drake's album. And he was talking about, oh, yeah, he did. He did give me with that bar. Oh, yeah, I like that song. That song is my shit. Like, yeah, I, I like it when people are copacetic, but no, that didn't get reported. <laughs> um, I'll, che- I'll check it out because I, I, I tend to enjoy Joe Budden and his rants. But, um, okay, so and tell he, me about it. Yeah, he did ask some really interesting questions because, um, if you don't know, Pusha T is also the president of Good Music. Yeah, yeah. So he was like, well, what happened with Tiana Taylor's uh, marketing budget? <laughs> like, what happened with this? Like, what happened with that? Like, you know, he, Joe Budden asked really good, like, questions that you should ask when you get the president of a company in a room. Mm-hmm. And then they were, you know, talking about, you know, going to Wyoming to record and, 
it was a really good it was a good interview and push a t he didn't he didn't hold anything back he did kind of dodge the like whenever he would ask about artists you know like when he asked about tiana taylor's budget kind of like you know he dodged it yeah he did what he, did what he should have did you know he euro stepped that question and a lot of people want to know because that was a good r&b album it was i didn't hear it kts e yes it was it was good well, if it was good, then okay. Because Tiana's problem was that some songs were shortened, correct? Some songs were shortened. Of course, she didn't get to put all the songs that she wanted on the album. Yeah. But I think she still had more than Pusha T. Pusha T only has seven, and I think she had more than seven. Okay, I gotta ask you one more thing because I don't, I don't want Nicole to be left out the conversation forever. But <laughs> yo, do you think? And I don't think this is true. Do you think Kanye did Nas dirty with Nasir? What do you mean? Do you feel like that wasn't a worthy Nas album? I mean, but that would that would fall EP. on both of them. And to I love Nas, but he's never had a good ear for beats. I disagree. I feel like sometimes, well, most of the time they're they're experimental, but he he comes he, through. He doesn't have an ear like Rick Ross. Yeah, I mean, I think most of the time they're experimental, but he comes through on them though. That's that's my take. Yeah, he doesn't have as good of an ear as Jay. I, I agree with that that theory, but I feel like he comes through. So I I wouldn't completely blame that on Kanye, but as far as being like yeah, like I wouldn't like I bought tickets to the Life of Pablo tour. He came here twice. Mm -hmm. He came to Joe uh, Joe Lewis, and then he was coming to the Palace. I bought tickets to the Palace show. I think that was like maybe a few weeks after the show at Joe Lewis. But so he did the show at Joe Lewis, and then by the time the show, I think it was like maybe two dates, but he canceled the whole tour. Mm. Two dates before he was supposed to come back. Oh, uh, you get so a refund? I did get a refund, but okay. I um I will probably never buy a ticket to a Kanye West concert. I, def I definitely, now with the environment that we're in and the new support that he's gotten, like right, he, right. the new, you know, Make America Great Again fans that he's gotten, I would never go to a Kanye West concert. All right, honest statement. Honest statement. Um, I got. I, I still didn't finish Kids See Ghosts. I still haven't heard Yay. I did listen to um, Daytona and I did listen to Nasir. Haven't heard KTSE yet. Probably playing to later, but yeah. I didn't think Yay was. I didn't just didn't want to listen to it, man. I don't think he's in the right headspace for me, just for me personally. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, man. I I, I miss the old Kanye. You know, <laughs> straight from the gold Kanye. I do. I really do. But he's gone. <laughs> he, he's gone. But he's gone. Nicole, you got any people you used to be fans of, but due to recent like like allegiances or Me Too events that you just kind of took a step back from? Not really. <clears throat> I mean, that's a good question. I don't have anybody specifically. I guess like Louis C.K. that like really disappointed me. Kevin you Spacey and me both. really disappointed me. I was just—I don't know. It hurt. It did hurt. It did hurt. And you know, for a long time, I—I I didn't listen. His comedy albums are on my iPod, but for a long time, I kind of—I did dodge them because I, you know, above all, I was embarrassed. Like, you know, I was embarrassed to be a Louis fan for a long time. So I can—I can—I can, I can feel with you on that one. Yeah. What about you? You still listening to R. Kelly? <laughs> 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 I gotta say when he's featured like I, I do try to skip over his parts but you know like T-Pain I really just listen to him on I'm a Flirt remix because I love T-Pain's verse he just uh, released like some throwaway songs they were like under new albums and I was like oh T-Pain has a new album and then I read the description and they were basically like throwaway songs that he hadn't released. I was like, oh, I'm not even going to finish this. We waited so long for the T-Wayne album that when it dropped, it's like we didn't care anymore. It dropped? <laughs> and see, you didn't even know. Like, <laughs> when did like, that come out? For a long time, we wanted T-Pain and Lil Wayne to make an album together. And when they finally made it, it was kind of like just them rapping or singing over each other's songs. And I was kind of like scratching my head like, we waited for years for this? I didn't even know that it came out. I learned something new every day. Quick theory. 
I think when J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar, when they, like, every rapper gets to this point where they're not as popular as they used to be. Like, they're still good. They still have their fans, but they're not as, like, on the charts as they used to be. I think that's when they'll release their collab. You think it's done? I don't even think it's I don't even think it's been made. Oh, I think I think songs have been made, but I feel like they'll release it when the when the fame when the popularity has died off a little bit. They'll be like, "All right, we got time. Let's do this." Oh, you you think that's gonna happen anytime soon? <laughs> no, I mean people love Cole and Kendrick now. Yes, they're in, they do. They're at, they're at their peak right now. I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. Yes, they do. Um. So hey, Carter Five, did you did you get into it? No, I, but I've never been a Little Wayne fan. Like I never. Mm. <laughs> I've, I've heard that you know it. I mean, it is what you think it is, and he's rapping, and that's pretty much what all you're gonna get. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> it ain't Carter Two, Little Wayne. Let's just put it that way. And I and and me not being a Little Wayne fan, I did enjoy Carter One. He did switch his flow up a lot in be, like between Carter 1 and Carter 2, and I did enjoy Carter 2. I even kind of enjoyed his parts on Like Father, Like Son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, wasn't a sol- that, that was a solid collab with him, between him and Birdman. No, it, it, there is no such thing as a solid collab with Birdman. <laughs> like I he's think, I think trash. Him and, I think him and Birdman had a nice mix on that album. I liked the beat selection, and I liked... You know, like, on the songs yeah. that I did enjoy, I liked Lil Wayne's parts, but not Baby. Baby, he ruined songs. Yeah. I feel like the only song I've heard with him and Manny Fresh is, uh, uh, what's that song? Uh, Hood. It's on the Hood Rich album. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Big Timers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, Big time. Timers, that's the, that's the group, Manny Fresh and Baby. Right, 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 right. But they made a song together, and it was on the Hood Rich album, though. Who made a song together? Manny Fresh and um, Still Fly. Still Fly is the only song I know by those two, by by the by Manny Fresh and Birdman. Oh, by the Big Timers. That was like their third album, maybe fourth. Oh wow! I thought they only had one album. No, they they've been doing it a long time. <laughs> the, the Big Timers, yeah. Okay. Some nice uh, Midnight Club Two music to ride to. You yeah, I like that. Um, I like that album, but I haven't listened to it like since it was like it was popular. It came out like the like the spring before I graduated from high school. Cool, cool, cool. What else we got on the agenda? I have a question for you. Go ahead. What do you think steroids do? <laughs> um, I mean, there's different kinds in the world, though, aren't there? Like, there's different functions of each one. Yeah, you just, you cracked me up because you kept asking the other day, you're like, how does it feel um, to be on the steroids? And I'm like... like I- Low key, I was like, I thought, I thought it altered your mood a little bit. Like, I thought it made you like Are you thinking like, about like when people take steroids, like for sports. Well, yeah, I mean, like, rage. like it, it height, heightens your emotions. That's what I thought was going on, because you know, I mean, I ain't gonna air that out here, but you know, you and I was having a conversation, and you was like, I already told you, yeah, man, like, damn. I was like, yo, 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 is that the, is that the roids? Like, what's going on? That, you're never supposed to say that to a woman about anything. What is wrong well, with you? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Men and women can take that can take that though. So it has it, it wasn't centered it wasn't centered towards women. We can have our alter moves when we take stuff too. I mean, yeah, but it's usually like I don't. You're not supposed to say that. Like especially, oh, you're on your period. Is that your medication? That's not, like that's, that's not. That's not what that was. Hmm. That's not what that was. I'd expect. Her no, that. it wasn't. I, I, and that wasn't. That wasn't roid rage either. <laughs> that was just. I'd expect no, her to ask honestly, me the same the question. No, steroids just make me tired and hungry all the time, and I have to pee every five minutes. <laughs> and you're driving. I'm not driving. Oh, okay. You were driving. I did. I drove yesterday. I tried to do some small tasks like laundry and grocery shopping. And after all that, I was like, yep, I hate this. I'm not doing it again. Uh, did y'all play the lotto? I want to. I might do it today. It went up to a billion. That's it's something. 1.6. Wow. I wonder what you do with all that money. I mean, me, I know I'm making moves. I would pay my bills. And then Everybody would. Blow it all and go broke. 
I don't think I would do that. No. I I'd, I'd buy a, I'd buy a spot. statistically speaking that's what happens. Oh okay, no, but I not when I, it's when the when the aren't the winnings are over. If you if if it's five million or less, they tend to go broke. But yeah. if it's more than that, they don't. Yeah. Except for that one guy, but he like so because he took the he didn't take the lump sum, he took the twenty year payments. So he spent, I guess, his first check, and then he went to like JG Wentworth or somebody. See, that's what you they have pay to do. pennies on the dollar. Like they'll give you like a two million dollar check, but they're gonna get ten million. See, that's what you got to do too. But also, I feel like buying yourself uh, a seat on the board of a successful company works too, where you work, where your money works for you. Oh, so more capitalism, yay! Well, hey man, <laughs> listen, you could use that capitalism. And get a get yourself a philanthropy um, fund or whatever, and help others. So you might be selling out a little oh, bit. Tax write off, yay! You'll be selling out to sell in. There's once you sell out, you sell out. I've, I've seen some people come back. I know you're gonna ask me for examples, but I'll give it to you later. All okay. right, that's it. All right, we, we, had, we, we had a good episode here. Um, Randy told us to shut up. Um, <laughs> I mean, I said wrap up. I didn't say stop talking right now. <laughs> Nicole, you got any final thoughts? Um, no. What would you do with the lottery? I want to feel better. What would you do with the lottery before before we wrap up? Uh, that's a good question. Probably pay off all my bills and, I don't know, travel. I want to travel. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, y'all better hope I don't win because I don't know none of y'all motherfuckers. If I win, I'm not going. <laughs> I'm, door, I'm a man. stranger. I'm disappearing. I don't know you. I don't know my mom. I don't know Jordan. I'm out. No, no, no. Don't do that. But to I'm your her. favorite podcast producer. You are. <laughs> you are, Randy. All right, y'all. We. This is a great episode of Can We Talk. Y'all have a good one. I'm. Still